happening everyone? Welcome back to the shed and this is part 16 or 17 I think of this custom guitar build. Now I haven't had a chance to make a video in a few days. It's been unbelievably hot, I've been unbelievably busy and I was waiting on parts to arrive for this guitar. Sometimes living in Ireland you might as well be living on Mars when you're trying to get parts for a Disney. But I have them now so we can crack on. So in this episode we're going to make our control cavity cover. We're going to patina some copper to do that. I'm going to route out this phone bar. So we've got a phone bar or a ferrule bar to sort out the problems we have with our ferrules. So that will all be taken care of, hopefully, and we shouldn't see any more issues with it. Then it's going to be final sanding and we can start to oil prepare this body. And once the oil is sort of dry, then it's hardware and it's set up, bring it up, set up and get ready to play it. So um, let me get you for a closer look and I see, show you what we're doing um, and what I need to finish this guitar and why it took me a few days to get to where I am. Let's do it. Right guys, let me talk you through what I need to do with this guitar here now and why it's taken so long to make this video. So if you remember in a previous episode, we had a problem with the ferrule bubble. Um, the glue bit ripped it into the Satili and it just compressed the four center holes together so our ferrules were going to be uneven on the back of the guitar and I didn't want to leave it like that. So to solve that problem, I've got a ferrule bar or sometimes we're referring to as tone bars. So this will just be recessed into the back of the guitar and um, all our strings will fit into this. So essentially, that's what we'll see on the back of the guitar. We won't actually see the ferrule bars anymore. So that will sort that problem out. Now, there's a template to install this, which I've ordered. So it comes with a master, and then it comes with um, the two inserts. One is to route for the body itself, so that there. And then one is to recess the, the front flange piece. Um, now both of them are different sizes. They just fit into the master template. These are from Granger Engineering, Engineering, um, they make guitar parts in the UK. I'll put links in the description below if you're interested in any of this stuff. I'll show you where to get it. It's the first time I've used their products, but their templates and stuff seem pretty good. Now the problem with the templates are, they're designed to be used with guide fish and not the bearing on the router for it. So this is why I had to order this gear, and um, this is why it's taken so long to make this video. So in order to route that into the back of the guitar, I've had to get a guide fish. So, I have a tri Triton router here. Now the problem with Triton routers is that guide bushes are all in Imperial, not metric. I couldn't find guide bushes to go into this um, that would fit this template. This template is designed to be used with an 18 millimeter guide bush. And as you can see, the bit that I have in this router has the bearings on it, and those bearings are designed to run along the template, and it will cut, they're the exact width of your cutter, so they will cut the template exactly. But like I say, these ones are designed to be used with a guide bush, and a guide bush keeps your cutter off your template by a set distance. So as you can see, if I put the ferrule block in the middle of this, put it there, it's about six millimeters too small on either side, so this won't work. So what I've had to do is order some parts from Trend. So Trend do a universal plate for their guide bushes. Their guide bushes are in metric, so I'm trying to get this plate to fit this Triton router. Um, there's our guide bush there, so just to show you how that works, that will run around the inside of this template and uh, keep the, the cutter the exact distance required off the template to um, cut an exact hole for a ferrule bar if that makes sense. So see that's exactly 18 millimeters, so it's 10 mil for the body. Alright, so now I've got to make this plate fit this and uh, there's a number of screw holes once you remove the Triton plate and as you can see it is has many different screw holes in it. It's designed to fit almost all um, routers. It doesn't quite fit the Triton router of course, problems as always, but I've found two screw holes that line up. So um, we need to get this, make sure that we're exactly centre over our cutter. If not, obviously we won't be cutting um, exactly centre of our um, templates. So yeah, so I've lined it up now and I've found two holes that line up that keep me center. So I'm going to go with them. They're, they're not directly opposite each other. They're slightly offset, but it should be enough to stop this thing from moving. So let me just use them now. And hopefully we can keep this cutter center. Pretty 
good. No, I've got more on. So I suppose the next thing to do is get a test piece of timber. Let's do a test pass with our template and see if we can get this to fit in nice. So that's the next thing we'll do. And then we'll go on the guitar. Okay guys, we have our test piece set up, so it's a good piece of pine. We have our master template, which is just double sided tape down to our piece of pine. We have our two interior templates which sit into this bench. So we have a larger one and a smaller one. This is our ferrule bar or cone bar. Um, the smaller template is so we can route in the body of this cone bar or ferrule bar. And the larger template then is for our flank so we can have a face so we can route this piece of wood into that tree so that's where the guitar sits. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the larger first for area before we cut the, the narrower deeper first for area. So just take this pop it into our template nice and simple we have our guide bush and our router bit all set up and centered we know that's right so a nice quick tip if you want to just get set up your depth stop nice and easy that's the depth i kind of achieve here so i just get that drop my depth stop down stick that just under it and uh, drop it on top of it and that's the thickness it's going to go down all right it's nice and simple whatever you're cutting out you can just drop stick it between your stop and your depth stop and that is the thickness you need it's just a quick no measurements required just use your cartridge hand and resize it that's the thing all right so let me get this set up now we're ready to take our cut and our first pass and uh, let's see how this gets on bar routed out now we have our recess for the flank plate on the top and we have our body routed out and it sits in perfectly so these things are actually spot on nicely engineered i'm not going to push it down because it's such a snug fit that it doesn't want to come back out again so no screws required but um as you can see it's a perfect fit around it so yeah on to the guitar now and fingers crossed we can repeat this process right same process as before we've lined our template up with our center line of our guitar our master template has a center line on each side of it so we've lined that up with the guitar just check our ferrule is in the right or our cone bar is in the right place our ferrule bar and uh, it's a case of go slowly take our time we've done it already so it shouldn't be a problem and just let's rev it out That's our ferrule bar and um, fit into the guitar fits perfectly it's nice and snug everything is nice and neat so we've done away with the problem now of our crooked ferrules and um, that was a good solution again links will be in the description to where I got all these things in order to do this I will have these now for future project projects so I can recommend them I've just used them so um, I'm happy with how they're made they're very well engineered and everything is precise which is what you want so again links in the description to where I got these below now we can get on to the cavity cover which will be copper, patina copper and then we're going to do a final sanding and we can start to put the finish on this guitar and once our finish is done then it's onto the hardware and uh, it's almost time to play it so let's crack on with that Alright guys, we're going to look at making this control cavity cover I'm going to make it out of copper sheet now I should have built a template from the very beginning for this um, it would have been a much easier process to do but this is kind of like a prototype guitar and it's a bit of a learning curve as well so I'm just going to do this by hand again. So I've just recessed um, an edge on this cavity with, with, with the router. I made a, just a rough template just to run the router around. It's not perfect, but um, it'll work. It'll work. And that's all I want for now. So I'm going to cut this by hand and I'm going to file it to fit. That's the idea. Now, ideally, what I, like I said, what I should have done was made a template, 
for the size of this control cavity and another template then for my recess and then I could have used that then to make my plate cover. I didn't do that so I'm going to cut this roughly. I've um, drew it out on a piece of greaseproof paper again so I'm going to rough cut this out I'm going to file it to fit and hopefully we'll get a good neat fit on this. Um, this will naturally patina over time. What I might do is just hit this with a bit of lacquer spray um, and just let it do its own thing over time. We could patina this if we wanted it but I don't think I will. Um, you won't keep this pristine, it will get scratched up and stuff. So um, enough of me talking now. I'm going to cut this out and it's just going to be a lot of foiling to fit. And uh, here let's crack on with it. So just a pair of tin snips to cut this out so I'm going to rough cut it out with this first. Right guys, we have our copper sheet rough cut out, and um, it's almost the shape. Now we're going to finish it with the hand foil. Um, it's fairly thin copper sheet, it's only a couple of mil thick. So when you're working sheet metal like this, like, and you're foiling it, I always find it's good to have something solid underneath it, and keep the edge you're working to as close as possible to the solid edge. It, this stuff is very flexible, and if you're trying to foil it out here, it's just impossible. So just keep it as close as possible to this edge, and just work your foil. It'll just keep it nice and stable for you. Um, I'm just going to be checking this as I go. Again, I should have made a template for this. For the next build, if I build this particular type of guitar again, it, it will have templates for everything. So um, again, this is kind of just a prototype build, more or less. So yeah, I'm going to work this by hand now, and uh, don't laugh at the shorts. It's unbelievably hot in this country, in Ireland, again this week, and uh, I need some way to keep them cool. It's not exactly work attire, but hey, it'll do, it'll do. Alright, so I'll crack on with this now. Keep checking as I go, and hopefully we can get it close enough to our uh, routed edge. Right. Right guys, we have our copper plate fitted. Um, it was just a case of foil it by hand, foil to fit. I don't recommend you do it that way. That was a pain in the ass now. But um, it fits pretty good. We even accounted for the little bit that I overran with the router. So I add that bit in as well. And um, yeah, it fits perfectly. It's actually holding itself in now. And it's only a couple of mil deep, the, um, the lip. But um, yeah, definitely make a template. Use your template to cut your cavity. And then use your template to build your cavity cover. Um, fitting it by hand is painstaking and it's a pain in the ass so I won't be doing that again but it fits and it fits well so what I'll do now is I might coat this in um, some lacquer some spray lacquer and just leave it as is and um, I'll just remove the film off the back of it now it's already pretty dinged up and stuff it's an old piece of copper plate that I had so it's and um, there's a bit of patina in it already and it will discolor over time and do its own thing but I lacquer it just to just to help to protect the wood from it, that's all. So that's that job done. On to the next one. Right guys, our control cavity cover. That was the next thing I wanted to do. So I've patina this now. And what I've done to patina this is, it's just a small bit of water and uh, some miracle grow plant food. Just sprinkle that on top and you get this nice blue patina on it. If you wanted to go green, you can use red vinegar and the miracle grow and it will turn it green. Now obviously this won't stay on it. I'll have to dunk this now in water and wash it off to see what effects are underneath. Then we'll dry it and we'll hit it with some lacquer. Now the thing is, this thing will oxidize itself anyway. It'll change over time. It won't stay like we put it now. But it's the, one of the beauties of using these copper things. They change over time. They naturally patina themselves. So um, I wanted to put a patina on this because it's a large piece of copper and it looks like just too much copper on, back of, on the back of the guitar. So I wanted to put a pattern into it just to break it up a small bit. So we'll dunk this in the water now. We'll clean it off. We'll see what we're left with. Again, like I say, when I hit this with the lacquer now, it'll change the colour of it again. Like, So we'll see. It's all experimentation. Um, so again, Miracle Grow, small bit of water. Just let the water evaporate off it. Come back to it a day or two later, and you have this. So let's see what we really have anyway when we wash it in the water. nicer pattern on the back of it than we did on the front but um, it's still a little bit more visually interesting than we had um, just the plain copper so I need to go to the camera guys pick up all that I'm just gonna let's see so you can see it, it just patinaed it it put a kind of a, a pattern into it 
again I'll hit this now with a lacquer and then it'll change it again it'll darken it all up and this one naturally changed colour itself over time and um, it's just something to be it's a little bit more visually interesting than just plain copper on the back of the guitar so um, yeah that's not actually too bad so we'll run with that now so I'll dry this off hit it with lacquer and see where we go again the back of it like the pattern on the back that we were able to achieve so yeah, it's a little bit more interesting on the back than the front but sure hey what do you do maybe leave it face down try that the next time uh, but for now we'll run with this right guys happily enough that is actually the front of our control tape i remember now that i did actually come around flip this thing over so that it would be face down in the liquid this is the trouble about making a video that's over a few days i actually forgot what i had done but um, as you can see we've got some nice blues and some golds and uh, some reds all kinds of colors going on in this so that's going to be on the back of our guitar so it'll be facing out that'll be our control cavity cover so i'm just going to hit this with some clear lacquer now see how it goes again the lacquer the last time i done this when i made the copper pick card for the stratocaster the, the lacquer reacted with it and changed it darkened everything up but again it, it was an interesting color i was left with this is all experimentation you never know what you're really going to get so just give it a bash yourselves and see what you get so uh, i'm just going to use some normal clear lacquer spray can build up a few coats on this nothing too fancy because again this will patina naturally over time anyway which is what we want right so nice and simple just a few clear coats and we'll see what we get Okay, we let that dry and uh, we just keep building it up build up just a couple of coats is all we need not too many and let that dry we'll flip it over we'll do the other side just the lacquer will help it from reacting with the wood in the guitar as well so um so far so good on the stratocaster i've built i've had no issues with the copper to that stage so i don't envisage having any issues with this either so i'll build up all the coats on this now and when that's finished we'll jump back in okay guys there's our control cavity cover patinaed and lacquered this will change colour over the next few days, over the next few weeks. It will darken up. This kind of pinkish area will kind of go a, a reddish brown. Um, so we will oxidise and continue to colour over time. But it's got a pretty nice um, patina on it there. The camera will focus on that. There we go. So, yeah, it's not going to be too bad. So that will have to be mounted into the guitar. That will be the last thing we'll actually do once all the controls are done. We can put our screw holes and mount this up. But for now... It's time to oil finish this guitar now. I've done the final sanding on it and uh, let's get the first coat of oil on it. Right guys, we're going to start to oil finish this guitar now and uh, this is always my favourite part of the project. Once you get the first coat of oil on, you can see that green begin to pop and see what it's going to look like. So we're going to use some of the Crimson Guitars um, finishing oil. Now this is, they have a new product out now which is a high build oil which you can get coats of oil almost up to a lacquer like finish quicker. This is now officially their penetrating oil um, I've used it before it's pretty good you can build up to a gloss finish with this as well it just takes a good few coats but it penetrates into the wood and uh, it's pretty easy to use so what we're going to do is we're just going to pour this on and we're going to work it in with some 400 grit sandpaper just so we get a bit of grain filling going on in this acrylic and uh, yeah there's not much to this really just build up their coats take your time let them dry wipe off your excess as it, as it begins to get tacky and just build up your coat um, so we're going to work on the body and then we'll do the neck. Okay, let's do this. Just spread it with some tissue paper. Okay, there we go. Hopefully you guys can see this now. always amazing to watch the guitar come alive when you get that first coat of oil on it now 
was pretty warm in the shed again today, so I'm, I'm expecting this stuff to go off pretty quickly. Um, so it might not come up fast enough. So I'm just going to go across the grain with the sandpaper now and just start to fill the grain slightly. Just to work that oil in. It has already penetrated into the wood. It's soaked right in already. Um, so we're going to go across the grain just to fill it. If you go with the grain, you'll actually pull stuff out. So it's always better to go across the grain when you're trying to grain fill. So this just works up a small layer of sawdust, mixes with the oil, and it just fills the pores. Okay, guys, same process on the back of the cacao. Just going to put on the oil, rub it in. 400 grit sandpaper, do a little bit of grain filling and just wipe off the excess. Now it's so hot today in the shed that it's it's just soaking straight into the guitar um, and it's just drying almost straight away. So we don't have to wait too long between coats. So we can build this up quite quickly. And uh, I got you in a little bit closer just so you can appreciate the, the pure joy of putting oil onto a guitar for the first time or any woodworking project when you first put that first coat of lacquer on or oil finish and you just see that grain come alive. It's, uh, you get a buzz off it, I think, anyway. So, um, just looking at this, trying to see this again. Just happy to put that out. We can just lash it on there. Initially this guitar will pull a good bit of this oil into it um, until we start to build up a couple of coats. So maybe the first, I don't know, it could be two or three coats will just disappear into the guitar pretty quickly. But um, let me just get them on now. I'll work my way up the neck a little bit later on. I just want to kind of concentrate on the body for now. And uh, just get it on and just start sanding. Just as simple as that. I just want to continue to build the coat to this guitar and um, as it starts to get tacky we can wipe off the excess let it dry a little bit build up our next coat very very simple uh, it's unbelievably hot here again in the shed so i have to let the door open so i'm delighted to wash you in here it's not much i can do about it um, i'm melted in here i'm in work clothes i should be doing this in my underpants but it wouldn't be good for making a film so uh, yeah just nice and simple build up their coats first few coats bit of sanding crack on with this thing like i say it's so hot today that it's, it's going off pretty quick and um, the sound starts to get tacky just give it a quick wipe over with a clean like a clean uh, cloth or a clean uh, tissue paper and then just reapply let it go tacky again and just keep building your coats until you're happy with the finish it's a uh, very forgiving stuff so it's not so hard to do this is coat number three, I believe. This is when it will start to fill up now and we can start to see a kind of a gloss, a small gloss come on it. The first few coats will just disappear into the timber. Right, so guys, I've just put on about seven coats of oil now, so I have it up to a um, satin finish this is what i'm happy with so that's what i'm going to go with i'm just doing the final um wipe down just the last bit of excess taken off it i'm just using a towel for this um just because the tissue can break up when you're doing it uh, when the wiping is kind of hard so um yeah i'm kind of happy with the finish now and how it's turned out i've done the neck as well just i think i've done four coats on the neck and the headstock and the body got about seven to eight coats and uh, it's good to wipe it down now and we're going to stick with this kind of satin finish that we have on the guitar. Right, 
quickly, that's it for this episode. We're on the home straight. The finish line is in sight. We have the Katara body finish now. I have it for a satin finish. It's kind of a satin sheen on it, which is the way I want it. Um, I'm happy with that. Couple of coats on the neck, seven or eight coats on the body, and that's all sorted. We have our control cavity cover done. It's copper and it's patinaed. We have our ferrule bar there, we have piston curve in, so that's solved the problem of our piece of ferrule. So that's all taken care of now, which is great. And that sits in perfectly there. So the next episode is going to be hardware and electronics installed. So it'll be the pickups, the control wiring, push push pops, tuner head, everything. And then it's going to be set up and play this thing. So yeah, we're almost on the home straight. One or two more episodes to go and it's it's done and dusted. Um, hopefully you're enjoying it so far. Hit like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot. You can follow me on Instagram now. I put the link somewhere here. It should slide in. If it doesn't slide in, it's in the comments below. So check it out there. And uh, that's it for now. It's still unbelievably hot in this country. So I got to get out of the shed again. Before I, uh, catch you later.